TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen just in case. And if we do go live on Twitch.com, username's at the bottom, man. Just go in there and type that in. It's all free. Uh, don't forget, man, we do got Patreon as well, man. We post there five days a week. If we miss a day, we just do it on the weekend. This is Campaign Will Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 16. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107, 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. A recent survey has revealed that more than half of Britain's small and medium-sized businesses have outstanding invoices, totaling over £44 billion. Almost two-thirds of company owners believe that late payments were pushing their businesses to breaking point, while nearly a quarter revealed that they'd had to resort to their overdraft to keep afloat. Twenty percent of small and medium-sized businesses in the UK are owned more than owed more than twenty-five thousand pounds in outstanding invoices. Tough. High Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Cheadle, Manchester. They're hoping to collect a debt of almost two thousand four hundred pounds owed by Oracle Claims Limited in unpaid invoices. Well, it's one of these accident claim companies, isn't it? Popping up everywhere. Well, I ain't seen them in a minute. Mid-season return, huh? Okay. The agents had previously tried to find company director Munir Elahi at a commercial address, but found Oracle Claims were no longer trading from there. That's one house, mate. That's one big house. Well, it's up they got one big debit card. Notice of enforcement has now been sent to the only other official address for the business listed on company's house. You going that way, Vic? I'll go this way. Yeah. Block the cars it appears in. It to be a residential address, but the agents have every right to believe that the company is now trading from here. Hello. Hi there. Good morning. My name is the Victor and I call enforcement agents. We are after a, a company called Oracle Claims Limited. Mr. Munir Il. Don't live here, Mr. Munir Il. Don't live here, mate. And this company's not registered here. Right. He's a check company's house, mate. The note says been sent to this address. All right, thank you very much. You give us, you give us your, whatever you've given us, yeah. your information. Right. I'll speak to my brother. And that's it. Get away from your brother, please. Is it your brother, sir? It's my brother, yeah. Ask okay. Him, you need to get him on the phone. We need to speak to him now. That boy, angry. Hey, mate. Are you able to get him on the phone and get this sorted? Yeah, yeah, then we'll go. Know what? Get him on the phone right now. Yeah. Get him on the phone. We'll get it sorted. We'll go. I'm gonna call my dog out. I'm gonna call my dog out. Calm down. Just calm down. Let's just get it sorted. Calm down. We'll go, mate. Something like that. Bro, just say I'm gonna call my dog out. Despite his brother Asim's instant hostility, the agents have the right to stay and investigate further. Can you get arrested? Did you can't arrest, arrest me? What do you mean arrest? You can't I'm arrest not used to arrest me. Oh, you guys are high court enforcement. Yeah, exactly, mate. High court, right. Yeah. Guess what? You don't have to do yeah. nothing to me. Yeah. Guess what? I'm not in your line. Like, exactly. Get out of my property, no, my brother. Get out of my property, I'm not going anywhere, mate. Ahmed is on 10 early. Stop it! W, whoever this is. I could not stop what you're doing. That's disgusting. Let's just get this sorted and then we'll go. Simple as that. I could please. Yeah. Just ignore it. No, no, I understand. No, I understand. Yeah. I said. I said. I said you bet. Why is he that teed up? It got to be him. Tell him to start doing the language. People must think that when we in a situation where they get aggressive or starting to shout at us, 
that are they on the body cam or is there an actual camera here? I could It's I, the first I time everything can happen to us. It happens on a daily basis and you just think to yourself, here we go again. It's time for name calling. Or oh, it's story time. All right, I always want to tell you what they think you're doing is wrong or how you do it. Um but it's like water. Honestly, when it comes to the business side of this, I really have zero sympathy for anybody. Like when it's some personal stuff, okay. But like the business portion, man, I don't care. That's back to be honest with you. While Asim's mother tries to calm her son down, the defendant's other brother gets him on the phone. Hello. They've, yes. they've uh, got high, higher at court, enforcing here for the debt that you owe. Yes. The fact of the matter is, there's a debt here, at least we saw it. Well, it's, I can't believe you didn't sort it out. It's 1100 quid with them, and it's gone to 3300 quid, mate, with the fees. Basically, what my brother's saying that they've, they've got their details wrong, they should be going round to the office. You should not be right. coming to my personal Listen, property. Listen, sir, this you is. Come to my sir, property. Sir. And this company, okay. this company, let me yeah. just say, this company. Okay. I've got the details wrong because if you look at the company's house, yeah. if you look at the company's house and the company chat, Oracle Company Limited is not, this is not the address. Yep. We don't trade from here. Do you okay. know what's We're trading from here. No. Well, I'm listening company. to you. We know that there's an amount of paper. That's fine. But you come to the wrong address. You come to my home. You come to my family home. And that's disrespectful. Yeah. I've got no, it's the, not the disrespectful. Company. It's not disrespectful because it's on the paperwork. If you let, man, if you let bro finish, somebody down the line put this as an address. See, you know what I'm saying? It's not disrespectful. It's not being funny. We're in a laughing area and you're just embarrassing us for no reason. Oh, you're embarrassed. But it's, I don't feel like it's that embarrassing. They're in your home. Like, they're inside. No one around you can see what's going on. Like, it's tripping. You've not done your due diligence because that company is not registered to their own address. It's just not. So well, you need to do your checks, mate. Yeah, we I'll have to. I'll get a laptop out right, right now for you. Yeah. And I will speak to whoever I speak to and put in a complaint in, mate. You, you can put to the wrong address. Are you not understanding what I'm telling you? <coughs> no. I... Bro's not even letting them get a word in. I, 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 I thought this was a dialogue. I thought it was like, I, let me talk, you talk, you, you know. Sam, you're telling me you don't understand what I'm saying, sir. We live in a society where you don't want your neighbors to know your financial circumstances. That can be very embarrassing. So when we arrive, they worry, what, what's the neighbors going to say? I've only met one person like this in real life, what, what, what Elmore is talking about. Somebody who really cares about what other people think financially or what's going on in their life. I've only met one person. And it was recently. And me, I'm the type of person that don't care. I don't care what nobody think about me. Like, I don't. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me to have that energy around, I was like, it was kind of draining. I was like, oh, my God. Again, they weren't outright saying that they care, but the actions were speaking very, very loudly. And it was like, man, you want to keep up a front for people that you don't even know? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> What's my neighbors thinking? I get to get rid of these guys. And then they just normally make the situation worse by taking that frustration out on us. That's not going to help you at all. You know, you're just making the situation worse for yourself. The agents have now been in the house for 10 minutes. There's still no sign of the debtor, but his brother Asim isn't calming down. He wants to have some type of control. I get it. I think he's high though, or drunk or something. House is my house. It's my mum's house. It's my dad's house. So do you know what? If you're gonna stand, stand fucking correctly, mate. Can you move me? I'm trying to go upstairs. No. Okay. There you move, go. Then. Can you move over there, mate? Can you move over there? Do the game. Move, move over there now. Move. With tempers rising, Stuart calls the police. Hello, I need immediate police assistance, please. We've been met with hostility. Are you telling me that I have to walk around you? You're in my fucking house, you prick. You ain't the fucking police. You were... Well, now you really want to be embarrassed. Now the police gonna be there. For the courts, do you remember yeah. that, mate? Yeah. This simple case has turned into an aggressive situation. With Asim in direct conflict with Stuart, the agents will have to work hard to get this case resolved peacefully. That's a big house with the, with a, with, I don't like this staircase. I don't know, like it's, I don't know, it's weird. Isn't that weird?
his address. Officers are on their way to the address. But then the defendant's father arrives. Oh. The registered office is down in Cheadle. Yeah. Not here. So, yeah. no so you had no right to come here, first of all. <coughs> it's a high court writ. At the moment, they've got a CCJ, a county court judgment against. Our record claims limited, right? Because the CCJ wasn't paid, the, the, the claimant has transferred to the high court, which they're entitled to do. If he doesn't want to pay it, that's fine. We will go to the next stage. What's that? Remove goods. Finally, and the defendant be even himself more arrives. You're telling me you're going to remove this house? Don't belong to him. This is my house. Right. As right? long as we can Not keep his. Address him now. He's here. Address him. Like your your energy is focused on the wrong thing now. Address the person whose name, who's the reason for all of it. As as and he don't even live here, by the way. Is that is that? That's yeah. him. He don't I, even live here. Right. That, so you've got I, no right to be here? So at some point your son has put down this address, all right? The court has acted on information. So we are here legally. We have to get that straight. But we don't want to go to the next step unless he can make the payment. If he thinks anything is wrong here, he's got 14 days, which is two weeks, to sort it out. That's, that's pretty... It's a fucking piss take this is. It really is. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you put your name on the documents. You put this address. Like, this is business. You put it. You did it. They, the only re way they can get this is if you put it on some type of official paperwork. It don't matter if they run into you. You give them your ID and, have, and, and it has this address. They can't act on it because it's on no paperwork. You gave this. What people need to realize is... Um... I don't feel bad at all for nobody right now. When we arrive at your door, all our paperwork is in order, all the checks has been done, and we are there legally. People always think whatever we're doing is illegal, but we know the law, you know, we do this for a living. <coughs> 20 minutes after they were called, the police arrived. Now it's getting embarrassing. Hello, officer, are you okay? Can I just step in? I just want to say what's everyone's okay. Well, it's a rookie car. Obviously, when we first turned up, there's a bit of hostility, a bit of breach of the peace. So that's the reason for the call. The police tell Asim that the agents have every right to be in the house. But now, with his whole family caught up in his debt, Munir Elahi suddenly decides to pay. It's on a card, sir. This is the first time he's even spoke. Is it a debit card? Yeah. That's the amount, 2,355 and 45 pence. You can enter your PIN number and then a green button, please. This is a nice house. The colors, it's crazy, but <laughs> this is a nice house. Sir. Sources. There you go. These decorations and colors is wild. That's your card and your payment. Right. Thank yeah, you well, guys. Done. well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Time. All right, cheers. Thank you. Thank you. you know what, though, Vic? Mm. If you just answered the door and said, here's my debit card, you could have avoided all this. Yeah, it's just like, this, this van doesn't even have any, like, stickers on it. You don't know who it is. It's just... The neighbors don't know this van. I think it was just uh, a good port call just to get the police involved. It's just a typical, you know, family standing together, which is not a bad thing. Well, uh, there's ways and means of dealing with it, though, isn't there? Well, yeah. I mean? A recent report has revealed that rising rents in the private sector, combined with low wages and freezes on benefits, have put one million UK households at risk of homelessness. People in private rented accommodation spend more than 40% of their monthly income on housing costs, and nearly four million families are cutting back on essentials to pay for their rent or mortgage. More than one in five families with children who contacted a leading debt charity in 2016 were in rent areas. areas. See, now this right here, I might feel bad for the people. I might understand, like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, when it comes to the business portion, there ain't no way. <laughs> it could put on, like, some personal family type situations. All right. 8 a.m. High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in New Romney, Kent. To recover a debt of more than £4,000 owed by a couple in unpaid rent. 
the notes say we've got two traced addresses. It's going to be in this area, isn't it? The money is owed to the landlord of a property the couple, Rebecca and Harry, shared two years ago. It's looking like it could be flats, mate. It'll be on this side. It's there. It's like a, it looks like a ground floor flat. The landlord escalated the case to the High Court, and now the debtors must pay in full today. First to be visited is Rebecca. Oh, they broke up. We're going to have a look around the back, see if there's a back garden. Got him. I've seen movement. Have you? Right, OK. Uh, Rebecca, can you come to the door, please? I know you're in there. I've seen movement. Thank you. Why don't you Sorry. answer the first time when we knock? Sorry, I was That's right. I've got to go to work. In okay, minutes. you're Rebecca, I take it. Yes. Okay. Won't be 10 minutes, ma'am. You got Okay. To... What it is, um, my name is Gary Brown. Yeah. I'm an enforcement agent. Um, you've been taken to court. <laughs> you and. For what? Is it for unpaid rent or something? Or he, I moved out. I sorted it with the landlords. Because right. me and him are split up. We split up ages ago, <laughs> like two years ago. Right. I spoke to the landlords and they removed me from the tenancy. He's now in Newquay. Right. Have you got his phone number? Yes, I have. Sorry. That's I'm, all right. I've got to um, leave in like two minutes for work. Okay. Well, we are going to need to get this paid. Becky, try. You might as well go ahead and call in. Is to call her ex, Harry. You said the very same voice now, Sally. That sounds like, like your number's blocked. Yeah, it most probably is. That's what he's like. He won't answer because he doesn't answer me. Is that child key to get? No, I've got to go to work. I understand, work. but now. this needs to get paid. Or, or we remove goods, and we don't want to do that. Becky calls her ex. You see what I'm saying? Like, in Becky's situation, I understand. I feel bad for her. Like, but they got a job to do, but like, I, my heart goes out for you. You moved out that man's house and he left you on the paperwork and didn't do what he was supposed to do. His Probably was a whole lot of that going on in the relationship. That's why you left. Mother, Liz. Hello? Okay, you're right. No. I've got people here getting money for Harry's renteries. Oh, They're not going to listen, Liz. They're here now. Well, I've got them on then. Do you want me to speak, yeah. sir? <laughs> Why does somebody's mom always think they got the answers? Hello? Hello? Hello there. Um, the courts have said that they are both liable for the whole Responsible money. Responsible for the whole money, yeah. Um, and the order is basically for us to remove goods unless the debt's paid. So yeah. the, the best I can yeah. say is we'll, we'll give you till half past, half past eight. If the money's paid, then we'll leave with no goods, but otherwise we're going to have to escalate the case further. We can take... Don't me, Liz. He's blocked my number. Well, I'm just going to give um, my son a ring. I'm not sure it's going to be successful. OK, all right then. Your son seems like a crazy right, person. Then. The deadline... See, this is one of the bad things. When you get into a relationship and somebody moves in, y'all go get an apartment together and y'all break up and both of y'all want a lease. I'm not against anybody moving in with their girlfriend or boyfriend, but like. When it gets to stuff like this, it gets tough. Line is set. But then Becky's ex, Harry, calls. Do you know how much I hate you right now? Damn. Becky, you want to get hung up on. Well, there's no point going on like that. Yeah, my mom just told me. What am I meant to do, Harry? They're going to take my stuff away because of you. Well, it's not because of me, just me. Yeah. Um, I moved out. Well, here you go. You can talk to him because I don't want to speak to you. Hello, Harry. That's Hello, mate. Hello. I understand you live in Newquay. Yeah, yeah. We're at a hospital, so yeah. I mean, obviously, bar the clothes on my back, I don't own anything. So, can you at least help Becky out with this? Can you pay some of it? Well, uh, yeah, but the thing is, I'm, I'm already paying off other bills because I already owe my family money as it is. So I can't give you bulk money. Yeah, this is... Everybody's down bad right now. This ain't a good situation. That's the thing. If it's... 
I told you, I already knew by the, by the temperature of the conversation that she was dating the bum. Not paid, we're going to have to remove goods from this premises. I've got nothing. I come down with the clothes on my back with nothing. <laughs> OK. Um, I don't know what to say then, Harry, because my orders are to remove goods if the debt isn't paid. Because you're yeah, both liable for it. Yeah, is she to come and fix her? She's, uh... Yeah, one sec. Hello? Hello? Alright. What'd you do? No, I haven't spoke to my dad right now, Harry. Right. Well, I can't do anything here, can I? I've got nothing to give him. I'll give him my car if I could do, but I can't. Alright, thank you. Cheers. With Harry saying he can't contribute anything to... No, they gotta figure it out for this lady. They have to. They just they blatantly know that it's his fault now. They is clear. Towards their debt, Becky is now legally responsible for the full amount on the writ. Becky, calm down. We'll sort this out. We'll get it sorted. I'm just so annoyed that he's living No, I, I understand that. That's, I'm that not would lying be. To you at all. That would be frustrating. That's the most frustrating thing. Like I was getting email after email saying you owe to Harry mm. from the landlord, and I was ringing him. I was like, I don't live there anymore. Can you stop emailing me? And there was like, yeah, we understand. We can't take you off it until he's moved out. I see quite a lot of debt due to relationships going wrong and breaking down. And it really hits home that it's important to get things in order. So when enforcement agents turn up on their door and they're trying to recover money that one party may believe is owed by the other, it can just bring up all that past again, and um, it, it's quite difficult. A few minutes later, Harry's stepmother, Claire, uh, arrives. Claire, OK. Hello. OK, right, so how much, how much is it? £4,681. 4, oh, it's, it's, I know it isn't. So do you have to have the full amount? It needs to be the full balance, really. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Why are they doing that? See, now, now you're being petty. Gun dice where I ate four grand from. Oh, no! <laughs> I hate him so much! I don't know. I spoke to Dad. No. So you need to phone your dad, see if he can get you any. Both Harry and his stepmom have suggested that Becky calls her father, but she seems reluctant. No, no, he must be rich. Little girl. Just well, that's the thing he wants to look after you. He doesn't want to see you upset like this. I can understand completely. Especially why a dad would be upset that you're in this position. But with time running out, Becky follows advice and calls her father. Hang on, do you want to speak? To... Yeah, but it's not their fault. They're no, no. Do you want to speak to him, Dad? Sorry, we. we, we no, sorry, we're my dad is cross. Please. Okay, sorry. that's fine. Hello. We are together. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm Becky's dad. It does nothing that belongs to her. The TV is mine. No, I bought it all and I've got the seat for it all. Um, well, the fact that it's in her house is gonna, we're gonna believe that it belongs to her. This does need to get resolved and... Dad got straight on smoke. Like, why about the money? I get why they wouldn't want to pay it though. Like, I would, I would definitely take them 14 days and try to get it thrown out. Pretty sharpish. Oh, well, Becky will have a... Bit of surprise. I've got to speak to my wife and... Oh. So I'll put you back on the phone to Becky, but... Okay. To be honest, if it's not resolved soon, I'm going to have to start adding fees. And that's not me being difficult. No, no, you're doing your job. Let me put you back on to Becky. Oh, yeah, these people get it. They understand. It's still With a Becky's petty situation. reluctant to help, her time to raise some funds is running out. The horrible thing about debt is that it doesn't just affect the person who owes the money. Depending on how close family members are to that person, it can drag other people into it and it ultimately affects them as well. Five minutes later, Becky's father turns up at the house. Hello there. Hello there. And he wants answers. For starters, you can't take anything today, you can only mark it up and label it, correct? Okay. I don't need to tell me how to do it. No, job, but that sir. is the correct, isn't it? No, not that's not correct. <laughs> My understanding is that you can't remove anything from this today. Then you're mistaken. We can. And I have before. I'm trying to be reasonable. I'm trying to tell Becky. I'm trying to tell Becky what I'm willing to do. 
it's half an hour since I was supposed to escalate this chase. So we've been here an hour. But once it becomes obvious to me that the debt isn't going to be paid, I have no, no choice but start removing goods. Um, I'm just going to nip out the chip and pin machine. Please don't be cross with me, Douglas. That's my fault. I'm cross with it. How is it? It is a frustrating situation. Dad probably warned you about dude. Put it on our credit cards, half and half, all right? And then we'll find it out if that's okay. With Becky's possessions at risk, Harry's stepmother Claire and Becky's father step in to pay off the £4,600 debt in full. Okay, that's what I take the payment. It's £2,387.77. That's what they get us bogus. But at the end of the day, just, I mean, as parents and as, as Becky, like, just pay it off and wipe your hands fully of this ex. You ain't never got to talk to him again or his family. Because he definitely did y'all bogus or did her bogus with this. They're splitting it. So half on that car and half on, half on this car. The rest of it's on your car, is it? Okay. Yeah, thank you. This difficult case is finally resolved. All right, we'll, you. we'll get out of your hair. All right. It was nice to meet you. Shame it wasn't under, you under, this under more thank pleasant, you. pleasant yeah, circumstances. No, All the best. Take care. Thank you. We've got a good result for the client. That's what I always take away from a case. But I really felt sorry for this girl. Um, Genuine girl, genuine people around her coming to help her out. Yeah, for real. Now, this is one of those cases where it's like, all right, it's understandable. They never got mad. Nothing ever went left. Her situation was not even, this situation wouldn't have nothing to do with her. It's her ex boyfriend who's clearly a bum. But he's always been a bum, and that's why she left. Gary and Connor have managed to deal with a delicate situation. But in Stuart and Ian's next case, a soured... Mm, 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 mm. In 2016, more than 600,000 new companies were launched in the UK, investing on average £20,000 to cover startup costs. However, Research has shown that more than half of new businesses fall behind within the first five years, leaving a trail of debts behind them. More than 450,000 UK companies were dissolved in 2016. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and colleague Ian Taylor are in Congleton, Cheshire to collect £18,000 owed by a businessman for an unpaid loan. It's a big one, mate. Is it a private claimant? Yeah, private individual. The businessman, Keith, borrowed the money from a friend to invest in a new venture. But the enterprise failed. So his friend took him to court to get his money back and won the case. Businessman Keith... Was it a private claimant? Yeah, private individual. The businessman Keith borrowed the money from a friend to invest in a new venture. Borrowed is the key word. When you borrow money, you got to pay it back. So of course he won the court lease, okay. But the enterprise failed. So his friend took him to court to get his money back and won the case. There's no answer. So Stuart turns his attention to the 4x4 parked outside. It's worth a bit of money. About seven grand. He hopes that seizing the vehicle... Yeah, that'll do it. ...will prompt Keith to come to the door. Can we get a clamp? Yeah, please, mate. Yeah, people be forgetting them cars cause money. The crazy thing is you borrowed money from your friend, never paid him back. Now the friendship is dead because you had to go to court 
the business didn't work out, the investment didn't work out, none of it worked out. This is why you don't lend money to friends. It's as simple as that. Moments later, Stuart's tactic pays off. Sit the other crow on it, Ian. Hello there, sir. Oh. Yeah, my name is Mr McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. We are to execute a High Court writ to the value of £18,383. Hey. We are to collect payments or remove goods. I knew nothing about it. Right, a letter has been sent, I knew, sir. Care. I, I, care. I, I knew nothing about this right. at all. Well, See, this, this is the people we don't care about, because we already know his morals are flawed. He didn't care about his friend whatsoever when he took that money and it didn't work out and he didn't pay him back. And he made his friend go all the way through court instead of figuring it out. So, don't feel bad for him. Take everything. CCJ in your name, sir? Yes, there is. I, I so you do know about it? I do know about right. it, but I thought, I thought it sorted it. Right. Well, sadly, he's taking it to the High Court, sir. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you need to make payment, if not, the vehicle's going as well. well Look at the face of fake distress. Buddy, if you don't pay this goddamn gone bill, you came outside in a robe and gym shoes, nothing underneath. Like, come on, bud. Stop it. <laughs> we don't believe you. You ain't even got no socks on, do you? There's nothing I can do. I, I, yeah. Obviously, I can't. If I could have made the payment, I'd have paid yeah. it before. No, I understand, sir. But sadly, it means that we will have to execute the writ, so which means this vehicle will be removed. You better come in a minute. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> is there, is, I mean, really, is there anything you can pay? Nothing. Nothing. I'm skinned. I don't yeah. pay you. I mean, Richard was a, was a friend. Yeah. You know, we used to rally together. Yeah. Um, What's the debt regarding? If you don't mind me asking. To, we, we don't know him, you said. It was a business loan. It was a, uh, you know, it was a friendly loan. Yeah. Um, Sadly, when money's involved, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, one of those, isn't it? There's uh, nothing we can do so I can... Well, well, well we need at least 50% today. Uh, you see, you know what I mean? It's... I haven't got anything. No. I haven't got anything. No. We're in a huge house with a Land Rover outside, talking about he don't got anything. And he looked like he lying. Look how stressful it is for him to keep a straight face. No. With payments looking unlikely, Stuart and Ian start an inventory of goods inside the house they could seize along with the vehicle. But Keith is clearly still in shock. I can't He's believe you've just done this to me. No. Can't. Why can't you believe it? Wait, what did he say? I can't believe you've just done this to me. No. no. For 20, 20 bands? I don't care if we was friends since one. We're going to court for it. Twenty that's twenty thousand. Two zero comma zero zero zero. Matter of fact, that's 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 pounds. So if it was American money, what would it be? Like twenty five thousand? Twenty six dang, I just spit. Would it be like twenty six thousand, twenty five? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to court. I've seen people get <laughs> You know what? Yeah, we going to court. Like law-abiding citizens. We set up a business in 2002. Um, we? thought it was a surefire. Um, but to do it, it needed big money. So anyway, we set it up, and all we needed was like a, a 0.6 mm. to take up, to make profit. Yeah, yeah. No, and it, it never made 0.4. Right. And we put 300 grand in it. Wow, right. Yeah. It only takes one bad business deal to ruin a friendship, but part of running a business is to understand that sometimes it's going to fail. Half an hour later, right. Keith's partner, Julie, arrives. What we borrowed from Richard was eight grand, is what all we owed him, so how come it's it sets 18? Costs, interest. It was, eight, it was 12 after And the enforcement was... fees. We haven't got anything. That's why that's right. we've not been able to pay him. Right. Took out a loan, set the mortgage on the house. To try and clear debts. Fucking hell. 
Despite the couple's situation, the agents must continue taking the inventory. I feel like they don't got a lot in there, but they got some bits and pieces laying around. But this is an $18,000 debt. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Tell you what, some collection you've got here. <laughs> it's all shit. Mm. Is this stuff that you want to take as well? It's anything that's of value, I'm afraid. I don't believe you're doing this to me. No. But then, I mean, he's not doing it. Stuart spots something unexpected. I found shotgun cartridges here, so I'm going to try and find shotguns um, lying around. It appears that Keith may be involved in gun sports. There's a uh, shotgun cartridges and loads of ammunition in the garage. As shotguns can cost thousands. Oh, he do got the dogs that be hunting. They said the hunting dogs. They be they be grabbing ducks. Stuart and Ian may have another asset on their hands. It's got to be a safe, then, hasn't it? They know the guns will be stored in a safe. In a so room. Ian goes to talk to Keith. Uh, could you open the safe, please? No, sorry. Well, obviously, if we had to get a locksmith, then that gets added to your bill as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. You don't need well, anything added to that. And not only that, the contents of those old type on buying either, so... Right, again, you need to show proof. Yeah, they're on, my, no, they're on my ticket, but they belong to other people. With Keith refusing to open the safe, Stuart turns detective. Yeah, that's where the real money is, for sure. He spots a set of keys in the kitchen and goes to look for the safe. Upstairs, Stuart finds a stepladder leading to the loft. I feel like he's doing it real sneakily. No. How many's in there? Boom. There we go. Two shotguns. Two? I think they're both primaries. The guns could be worth thousands of pounds each, but legally, only a specialist removal team can take them away from the premises. Stuart goes downstairs to call the office. But Keith has the police on the phone. Hello? The bailiffs have come in, they've, they've opened the cabinet safe. You know, they've, they've kicked the guns in, which is completely wrong. It's illegal, actually. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's not illegal. I don't, he wouldn't have did it. Not Stuart. Stuart know too much. Stuart is a seasoned veteran. He, he ain't no way that's illegal. He wouldn't have did it. The way they're going to be here any minute. Just going to open the cabinet like you've done. But I'm not there, it's wrong. You do get. Look at the smile on his face. Going to open the cabinet like you've done. But I'm not there, it's wrong. Look at this smug smile. See what I'm talking about? Take everything. You get do it get defendants that try to argue themselves out of the writ, thinking that what we are doing is incorrect and the process is wrong. We're there with a writ that tells us in black and white exactly what we need to do, and we will enforce that. Half an hour later, the police arrive. Hi. They're actually lying on the kitchen side. Still, you're still talking about that. Mm -hmm. Without my permission, without me with you. He doesn't need your permission. He's high court in fire. All right. As far as I'm concerned, I am aware that I've got a court order and I have to be a specialist officer yeah. to remove those guns. Yes. That is what I am aware of, but I don't know where it stands with who has to be at the cabinet at the time. But I'll find out and clarify. Okay. okay. The police call for advice from the firearms team and report back to Stuart. Now, speaking with our specialist unit, yep. firearms team, yep. they've advised me, basically, that because you are here acting on behalf of the High Court, you have the central permission and right to attend. When somebody does come to yeah. remove them, they will have all the documentation to prove that they are yeah. licensed. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully that's clear okay. things up now for you. Is that OK? Right, thank you. I guess it's just people just be wanting that clarity. He felt like he... It looked like, though, the way he was looking, hands in the pocket, oh, I checkmate, buddy. No. <laughs> This is Stuart, this is Stuart McCracken. What's his name, Stuart? Yeah, Stuart McCracken, Stuart don't play that. Stuart know what's going on. 
You know what I'm saying? With his right to have opened the safe established, Stewart starts to make arrangements for removal of the shotguns and the 4x4. Well, I'll ring recovery and see how long it'll take to get here. But then Keith suddenly makes an offer. I can find two grand. That will not be accepted. I really have options here. I'll have to try and get hold of my nephew who, who can't afford it, but then it's a question there, will he, will he help us? Um, Keith goes to call his nephew. If I was his nephew, I'd say no, because he got a, he got a, <laughs> he got a serious track record of not paying people back. Hey, Jonathan, it's, uh, it's... Talking about Jonathan, you're going to use bro full name when you want some money, knowing you call him John on a normal basis. Jonathan Keith, uh, I'm in desperate need of some help. I was hoping it could be, which we could sort out alone. I've managed to get £2,000 together. Yeah, would you mind? Right, you're, you're a star. All right, thanks, Jonathan. See you later. W nephew, man. I, I, w nephew, I guess. L uncle for sure. Right, Jonathan's coming over. Tell me how. Please go and see what he can do. How far away is he? It can be hugely important for defendants to reach out to family because family ultimately is there to help when you're in need. And sometimes you do need to make that call and ask, ask the favor. I need some help. Can you help me? 10 minutes later, Keith's nephew arrives. Hi, oh, sorry, you okay? And makes an astounding suggestion. Hang out, Jonathan. That's the buyout. You prevent it. You prevent it, man. You clear your mortgage off. You clear this one, man. Pay your rent every month. Uh, and then pay me, pay me 20 grand back. And I'll sell it back to you whenever you want it. Whenever you, whenever you want this back, back. Yeah. There's an option, I'll buy it back. Yeah. Are you happy with this? You, I know you're not happy, but no. <laughs> smart, smart. I'm not just gonna give you twenty thousand. I'm gonna buy something off you for twenty thousand. And you want it back? I can see why. I can see why you're doing what you're doing, and I don't. And I understand. Yeah. yeah, I'm just. I am just devastated. I'm working with you. I've been school. There's an option there to have it back in. Yeah, the there's an option there. It's got. You know. Not using it. Yeah. It's just it's, it's a way of getting out of this yeah. rut that we're in now. Yeah. Yeah. The case has taken a remarkable turn. To pay off the £20,000 debt, Keith and Julie agree to sell the home that they've lived in for 17 years. What do we do about paying this? Then? We can do it by debit card or anything like that. Yeah, let's try it. Ah, I would have did the same thing. I got money to buy your home. You don't put you play with me if you that's want fine, to. I'm gonna keep this one. There we go, guys. That's the breakdown of it there. All right. Well, as soon as you don't pay me, it's gone. It's on the market. Who is this nephew? I ain't gonna lie. That's kind of, <laughs> hey. I ain't gonna lie. That's W nephew for coming through. But coming with that, those stipulations is is not diabolical. It's the right thing to do, but it just seems so cutthroat. Bro, not playing out here. He know his uncle body of work. I be telling you, man, I be judging people, man. I knew. I knew Uncle Moros was bogus when he didn't answer that door. And then when he threw through his friend in court and made him come get his money through court. No, oh, what's up now? Ourselves out, guys. All right. All right. See you later. Right. After four hours at the house, Stuart and Ian come away with payment in full. In commission. <laughs> got the nephew, eh? Yeah. Wouldn't you, though? You know what I mean? It's uh... family's family, though, isn't it? Nephew got the bag, though. And he got the business savvy. I'm trying to link with him when I come to the UK. I'm just, show me something. Show me something. A recent survey has revealed that the number of people in the UK who retire whilst in debt is on the rise.
over a quarter of people planning to retire in 2017 will be in debt, and the average amount owed is 30% higher than in 2016. People in the UK retiring with debt in 2017 owe an average of 24,000. Six thirty a.m. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Hove near Brighton. I like coming here for a family day out, just to go on the rides on the pier and win some teddies, that sort of stuff. They're here with a writ to recover nearly three thousand pounds owed by Michael Rooks after his dog got into a fight with the claimant's dog in a local park. First one is. Thousand pounds. They're here with a writ to recover nearly three thousand pounds. What kind of dog? Well, Michael probably Rooks vet deals. After is his dog got into so, a fight yeah. with the claimant's dog in a local park. First one is from Mr. Michael Rooks. Okay. It's a smallish debt to start you off with. Two thousand okay. seven hundred and fifty-seven pound. The claimant took Mr. Rooks to court to recover their vet fees. Mr. Rooks lost the case and now he must pay the £2,700 he owes today. Um, this is it, I think. That's this one here. Main thing is, get paid. Touch wood. There's no answer. They don't get But then Gary and Connor see movement at an upstairs window. Is that a bloke? I've got to see. There's a reflection. Uh, somebody's here. Hi, sir. Are you Michael Rooks? No. OK. Does he live here? Yes. Ah. Can we speak to him, please? Yeah, hold on. Mr Rooks? Yes. Hi, uh, my name's Connor Jackson. This is my colleague Gary Brown. Step in, stop. I don't want a dog to get out. What type of house is You've this? We've been taking the court on the 13th the 2nd this year, so we're here to collect an outstanding balance. Of, oh, yeah, uh, well, no, today it's £2,757.44. We have a dog fight. That's all. So, what, what, your dog attacked her dog? Yes. She was exercising three dogs in the park, one of which she was throwing a ball for, mm. which she threw near to me while I was picking up a dog's mess. I picked it up and my dog went for her dog. I don't know if you know anything about staffies, but once they've got their grip going, you can't, can't let them go. Yeah. I've heard people say, oh, stick your finger up their ass. I ain't gonna do that. Despite Mr. Rooks's dispute with the claimant, the agents are legally bound to enforce... Sticking your finger up that dog would have, would have saved you $3,000, though. What's the writ today? Today, you know, we need to collect £2,757. Yeah, and... okay. not over a big dog fight, you know? Okay, well... It's not I love when old people be in, in, in issues like this, because they just tell it like it is, like, hey, man, ain't nobody from the... Can I just not understand, me. when you said that you're not paying it, have you got the ability to pay it and you're refusing to? Old age pensioner. Okay, well, if you if you can't pay it, we're going to have to remove goods from the property. So I'm not even paying a penny of it. I, I'll go to prison first. I haven't got two thousand pounds in my name. Okay, but I might yeah, live but... in a nice house. This house cost me seven thousand pound thirty odd years ago. So that's the only reason I'm living here. With Mr. Rooks Good refusing, the I'll agents must look around the house for no, goods they could seize. But he's got other ideas. Don't you come into my house, sir? I'm sorry you're not coming in. We are going to be coming in, sir. Hey. Look where are you going in? I'm going to go and have a look around the house, sir. You're going to have a look around my house. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even waste my time. I wouldn't even do all that. I'd just call the police if I had to do my job. If I had a writ to enforce, I'm not going to go all back and forth with the older gentleman just out of respect. I'm just going to call the police. How the police explain it to him and. <laughs> Connor and Gary are now in a difficult situation. Faced with situation. an elderly debtor obstructing them in their duties, 
they must use all their tact and experience to get this case resolved. into the house need to try and make him under Look around my house now they need to try and make him understand that they won't be leaving until they've resolved the case one way or another unless you make the payment we're gonna have to remove bid sir I don't care but I'm not paying anything certainly not paying two thousand odd pounds as you say now over a dog fight okay well the court has ordered that you owe the money so we're gonna look around downstairs Gary and Connor try once again to make an inventory of goods they can seize to offset the debt. But then Gary spots something. Check out the balance on that. How much is it? Sir, you so you said you can't pay this. We found your bank statements here, sir. You got one here last year with a close, you know, closing yeah. balance of yeah. £22,000, and there's another one here for £32,000. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what's this? I'm not paying it. I got it, but I ain't doing it. Thousand pounds. Yeah. So this isn't a case of you can't pay. This is a case of you won't pay it. I'm not paying any. This is going to go one of two ways. Either the balance is paid, or we're going to remove goods today, and it's going to put the, the balance up. So we don't want to remove your goods. The best thing that you can do now is make a payment. We'll give you a receipt. We'll leave you all the court documents. Now, what did you call a payment? Well. All of the balance. Oh, not fucking two thousand. Sure, so I've seen your bank statements for the end yeah. of the last year. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I be feeling when rent comes. How much? I'm not. How, how much is what payment? Fifty grand in there. All of it. Yeah. So you do have the balance. Well, I'm not paying any penny at all. I'm not even going to appeal. I'm sorry. I, I think it's absolutely. Oh, I'm trying to help you here. Oh, no, I can't argue with you people. Excuse me. <laughs> that vicious dog that's guarding my house ain't doing me any good, is it? Hey, dog, get out of it. Yeah, you. Oh, you're bleeding, fool. This is just stubbornness, this is now. It is. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't think he understands that through his stubbornness. Bro, got $50,000 out. Sir, spend some of it. Get you some nice, nice stuff in the house or something. Like upgrade some stuff. You can't take that with you. I'm not fucking stupid. So, so why can't we resolve this, sir, and save? I told you I'm not paying me. Okay, but would you, so would you rather? You might as well call the office, buddy. Pay us, or would you rather me take things from the house? Look, I'd rather you left. I think it's absolutely disgusting that you could come in here and start threatening me about what you're going to take if I don't pay you money. I'm not threatening you, sir. You are threatening me. I'm trying to explain to you the process and what's going to happen if you don't make the payment. So, are you going to make this payment now, sir? Oh, fucking hell. Just pay it. The situation. I, I was on your side. You know what I'm saying? I'm still on your side because your attitude is, is really me at the end of the day. Like, I be feeling like that. <laughs> Why? I ain't paying nothing. Is it a stalemate? Connor tries one last time to try and persuade Mr. Rooks to pay. This is the last time I'm going to ask this. I'm going to give you this chance now to make the payment at 2,700. Otherwise, I'm going to have to escalate. Before you answer that, if you say no, you're not going to pay it, it is going to immediately go up to the next stage of enforcement and we will start removing goods. That's going to cost you more money. So please answer it carefully. There you go. Come on, sir. Just just pay it. Just get it out of your life. So you can be done with these people. Yeah, all right. Mr. Rooks finally agrees to pay his debt in full. Okay, so 275744, yeah, Gary. Okay, that's all we're authorised. Do you have people who have a heart attack while this is all happening? Not yet, but... Not yet, but you might get one in a minute. <laughs> I like them. I like this guy. I like his comical genius in it all. Hopefully not. It's all dealt with and we're going to be leaving now. But he has one lap. Bro, bro got like 60 bands in the bank and spent 2700 because your dog ate another dog. Like, it's okay. I know you ain't want to. I get it. That's word for the agents. I'm still pissed off with these two. It's nothing personal, Michael. No. 
my pissed off to you through his name, personal, but mm. I am. <laughs> yes, Michael. Talk to him. I'm going to leave you in peace. Mm. I, it was nice to meet you. No, Shame no, it wasn't no, under... I to shake your hand, but I will <laughs> It's a bit late. <laughs> right. All right, take You're care. Hope you get it sorted, Just all right? remember, I'll look at your faces and I won't have you come in my house again. Well, but hopefully, you've got your money now. Hopefully, so we won't, we hopefully we won't need to, Please will we? Please leave. I've had enough of you two. <laughs> get out. Fucking drive me up the wall. You left well, the camera, man? The police are coming round to tell me that the bailiffs are going to be called in to me or something like that. I was fast asleep in bed, for fuck's sake. They, they might get up early, but I don't. I feel you. I wouldn't get up early either if I had a house that I paid $7,000 for um, and I had 60 bands in the back. I'd be chilling. I have my little streaming set up so clean, and then and then that's it. And I wouldn't be doing nothing else in the house, streaming all day. Oh, what up, mate? Thank you. It was a difficult one, that, because all I could, all I could thinking was, it's just like my granddad, this. It's He's hard, it? I like that dude. I think, I think people of that generation... It is tough. You, you don't, the last thing you want to be doing is enforcing on an, an elderly person. But... Do you know what? They owe the money just like the rest of us. That dude's a crowd favorite, clearly, man. Tell Lily like, comment, I'm gone.